Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-213, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-213 is contained in a high-security humanoid containment cell within Site-77. The chamber is to be surrounded by a 10-meter wide zone filled with gaseous materials corrosive to human skin. SCP-213 should be informed as to the nature of its containment to prevent manifestation of its effect, which would result in additional containment breaches. A staffing of two guards armed with high-pressure hoses, oleoresin capsicum, and polymer web grenades should be stationed outside the containment unit at all times. Description SCP-213 is an adolescent humanoid male, 1.5 meters tall, weighing 95 kilograms. SCP-213 is able to forcefully sever the bonds between atoms in any solid or semi-solid matter with physical contact. An intense flash of light is produced when doing so. SCP-213 can use any part of its body to manifest this effect and has used it to disintegrate projectiles as they impact its body. Manifestation of this effect has proven to be extremely painful, with extended use causing enough pain to render SCP-213 unconscious. SCP-213 was recovered from Palo Alto, California when reports of a teenage boy being arrested for homicide after vaporizing his girlfriend during coitus reached agents embedded in the local police department. Further investigation revealed SCP-213's anomalous properties. However, during initial containment, SCP-213 vaporized the agents attempting to apprehend it. During the ensuing firefight with Mobile Task Force, SCP-213 was able to disable two agents before being contained. SCP-213's containment procedures were finalized on 19 and classified as Euclid. Addendum 213-07 SCP-213 has made its seventh escape attempt. After asking for another interview with Dr. S SCP-213 waited for security personnel to allow her to enter the containment chamber. As the majority of the containment procedures were disengaged, SCP-213 was able to apply its effect to the remaining security measures and breach containment. SCP-213 killed Dr. as well as two agents during the initial stage of its breach. SCP-213 had seen only a small portion of the facility and was easily apprehended after it encountered heavy resistance from security. Breaking through its cell weakened it enough to prevent further damage to other containment units. SCP-213 was apprehended in the site break room, attempting to break through the floor. However, extensive use of its effect left it unable to do so. Addendum 213-08 SCP-213 unintentionally breached containment on 2000. Due to the nature of this breach, no consequence has been issued. Video feed taken at 3.15 a.m. from SCP-213's cell show its bed and a section of the floor being affected, which caused SCP-213 to fall into a basement level. Containment procedures have been slated for revision. Researchers note. From study of this video, it is clear that SCP-213's control of this effect is not as perfect as it previously believed, and it has become more cooperative with us in trying to establish a method to control and utilize it. Vague conjecture on the part of the review staff as to possibilities of what would occur should the effect trigger accidentally, including SCP-213's self-vaporizing, are noted as being particularly useful in this regard. Addendum 213-09 For 7th During a routine physical examination of SCP-213, lesions were discovered on its back, appearing as smooth nodules. Presently, there are four nodules, placed at intervals on the subject's back in a perfect square. Distance between all four points is exactly 15 centimeters. Medical personnel have been assigned to SCP-213's containment in order to observe and rapidly respond to changes in this condition. Follow-up examinations have been scheduled. Ninth, 
A follow-up examination has led to the discovery of two more nodules located in the center of its palms. SCP-213 reports mild irritation, but no pain or discomfort. They resist pressure when applied with blunt or sharp instruments. During an attempt to excise a sample using a scalpel, the scalpel failed to cut and vaporized after a few seconds of applied pressure. SCP-213 denies responsibility for this occurrence. SCP-213 has become notably more apathetic and has expressed feelings of extreme pain from its back and stomach. The 14th. SCP-213 was moved to intensive care after being observed having a seizure in its containment cell. Examination of SCP-213 shows an additional 10 nodules have appeared on its back. A perfect distance of 5 centimeters separates each one. SCP-213 continues to report no pain from the lesions. SCP-213 has been assigned additional medical observers who will remain outside its containment with the standard guard staff for the next week. 23rd All nodules on SCP-213 have disappeared and been replaced with thin incisions slightly less than 1 millimeter in width. During inspection of these new changes, the medical examiner witnessed the incision on SCP-213's left palm open and an eye was observed watching her. SCP-213 has been placed in the medical wing indefinitely, pending further changes to the subject's condition. Addendum 213-10 The source of SCP-213's effect appears to be a parasitic infestation of unknown origin inhabiting its body. This life form has not attempted to communicate, but does observe any persons in SCP-213's presence through the lesions present on SCP-213's body. SCP-213 has exhibited panic over this development and requested several times that the entity be removed from him. Any requests of this nature from SCP-213 are to be denied pending further research. Researcher note. The organism inhabiting SCP-213 fails to show up on any medical scan we have at our disposal. The new hypothesis is that this effect actually serves to provide sustenance and self-defense, with repeated tests to determine the nature of the anomaly has led to increased growth. SCP-213 has been placed in a chemically induced coma until further research can be conducted regarding the nature of this parasite. Containment procedures slated for major revision. Okay. I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. Daydreams. That's all there is anymore. That's all I can have. I'm an all-powerful demigod locked in the chamber of a little boy. Do you know where the power goes? It flows out our fingers and out soggy clothes into broken men. They seek forgiveness, so here I go. Our mother was there, and the fridge flew out of the way. Mom's pretty neck, gone in a flash. Bursting blood onto my, our poor hands and dripping onto the floor. We're all broken now. The monsters, the jailers, they hold me now and they won't let me go. They need me whole. They make me fight Grammy, but she knows we've already won. This doesn't make any sense. What am I talking about? None of this shit actually happened. I need to get a hold of myself before I start spouting some more goddamn nonsense. Deep breaths. How many fingers do I have? Ten? Ten seems like a good number. One, two, ten. Okay, back. My name is Andrew, and there's something really wrong with me. I don't know what it is, or how it even started happening. All I can say is that when I was 17, I started to be able to destroy things. <laughs> Just make them disappear when I touch them. There's no way to control it, because as soon as I try, something else gets atomized and somebody else dies. God, if this... Not a jail, but a prison. 
if they hadn't gotten to me. I don't know how many more would have died. How many are dead in here right now? They say I've killed 30 people, but that, that's probably an exaggeration. <laughs> Something to get in my head. I know I killed. I killed my mom, but that was an accident. I didn't... I didn't know what I was doing. But actually, that's not how it happened at all. My name is Damien. And I'm pretty amazing, actually. Amazing is an understatement. I can do incredible, mind-blowing shit that none of you pussies listening to this could even dream of. <laughs> Look, dude, when you can fucking blow shit out of the sky with a touch, you turn some heads. Sure, before I came to this joint, I had a lot of fun with mayhem. But it's cool in here. Where else were you going to ignite some old hustler and kick back with a yoo-hoo? It's cold in here, but we're still sharp. The instrument sharpens the blade on every whetstone it uncovers, breaking new ground by breaking the bonds in front of it. Every shape it grasps, sees, tastes, and touches in one million new ways. Godspeed. No, you're remembering it wrong. You need to answer us. What is your name? I don't have one. I don't know. Where did you come from? California. I just, I just... Let me get some headspace, okay? This is too much. This is too gone. Just try to stay with us, okay? Who are you? I said I don't know! Fuck! Can you give me just one goddamn minute? Please, calm down. You're safe here. No, but... It's out there. It, it's... It's coming out, coming up, and ripping people to pieces. You're safe now. No, it's over. No, it never ends. No matter how many times I fucking want to go back to square one, to crawl into a little hole and hide myself and let this thing take over, it never happens. Something always pulls back from the edge. Memories fail me, and like so many other days, the sun is rising in the west and the clock counts down from zero. They keep, they keep making me change. Every death is coming close. I'm changed to suit the world better. My mind breaks and molds to fit their new sculpt. The piece de resistance of their new exhibition. Memories and histories rewritten until nothing remains of what they started but a name. And I don't know what my name is. I would like to give a special thank you to James Saba, Maximus Decimus, Arbiter Soul, Dr. Bright, Darius Tan, Justin Day, The Morrigan, Der Nom, Maxin, Joker Corvus, NJ Vojak, Corey Barker, and Eskrenok. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulcan. Thank you.